Welcome back to Watching Film with Seth Varnador. I'm a former high school and college football coach who's working with Alligator Army this season to do some breakdown of film for the Gators football team this season. Um, has not been smooth sailing lately uh, for the Gators. And, you know, we're, we're going to kind of take a look at some, on one side of the ball, a lot of negatives, and, and in particular one play. So uh, we're going to talk about counter. You've probably seen a lot about counter, heard a lot about counter. We're going to talk about it, talk about how defenses try to stop it, how Florida, I think, thought they were trying to stop it, and 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 what went wrong there. Then offensively, we're going to show some of the uh, some some uh, cool schematic wrinkles that I liked, but a, a lot of focus on Anthony Richardson and his you know. Um, it's hard to say coming out party for a guy that averaged 15 yards of play through his first two games, but uh, kind of on the national scene, it, most extended playing time of the year really kind of showed you kind of the full array of his skills. Um, and it was really impressive. So we'll start with the defense, start with the bad end with the good. So let's begin with a counter play. These are all going to be counters. So if you're looking for something else on the defense, it ain't going to be here. So there's two schools of thought typically on playing counter. You can box the counter, which your end will kind of take on the block here of the first puller. Let's say this guy take on the block, force the ball vertical, but try to tighten the seam of this alley, right? You're, the, you're, the key is to play this block physically and really squeeze down the running lane for the second puller and for the back. So you can play physical. So basically boxes, you're trying to just kind of squeeze that alley and turn the ball back inside, right? There's another way to play it, which is called spilling it. This guy will come to take on the block. He'll actually wrong arm it. So instead of keeping his outside arm free, he'll try to kind of jump inside and blow up the inside of the puller with his outside arm, forcing the ball to bounce, to spill to somebody coming over the top, right? So typically a safety or, or an outside backer, depending on what kind of defense you're running. So... Box and spill are kind of the two main ways and they're the two ways to play counter. So I think Florida, for the most part, was trying to box. The problem is you've got to be very physical when you do that. And then you got your guys that fill in the alley got to come up and make tackles. So this is probably one of the best defended counters of the day for Florida. So let's watch this through here. First of all, for the most part, LSU blew Florida's defensive line off the football. So he's coming here. You want this guy, which is your defensive end who's playing out. You know, in this defense, he's considered an outside backer or a buck, whatever. He's got to squeeze down and meet this puller with some physicality. Don't get upfield. Don't get blown off the ball. Meet the puller with some physicality. Your backers got to get downhill, meet the second pull or some physicality, and then you have your safety here to fill. So this isn't bad right here. It's not terrible. Your safety's got to make that play and got to take a better angle here. There, there seem to be, and then a lot, a lot of the uh, you'll see a lot of the LSU counter is this ball is shading to the hash here. A lot of their counter plays were to the boundary. So it must be something they liked. Florida did a lot of rotation of the safety down to the boundary side. And, you know, they didn't really um, – it, it seemed like they, he was in conflict. It seemed like he was trying to play maybe for RPO and also play kind of run, so kind of sit in this hole to take away any of that kind of RPO throw. So the scheme, it seems like, put him in conflict, did not let him play 100 miles an hour. And when you kind of can take that away, when, you know, cloudy minds equal slow feet is an is a old saying in football. So if you these guys don't know 100% what they're doing or they're trying to make, you know, judgment calls, am I playing the RPO, am I playing the counter, that leads to these kind of mistakes here. 
So here's another one. So Florida defended that one pretty well. So what was LSU's answer? Again, into the boundary. And then a lot of these, you'll notice a lot of these are kind of second and mediums, kind of a, a down where you have a lot open to you, really. So what they, what they did eventually was, so last time they brought the H back from over here in one lineman, they started going with the the opposite guard and opposite tackle. So old school, like counter look. And then they had a wing here. He would arc around. So last time, right, it was Cox last time. I think it's uh, somebody else this time. Met the puller. Safety was able to come in and have a chance to make the play. So what was LSU's adjustment? Arc around here. I've got the safety coming down. And then in this front, Florida's really got no shot because they're in kind of a bare front look or just a tight front possibly with the with the ends walked up here. But look, you got one backer. So right now, if they have a blocker, you're, you're kind of counting on the safety to roll up and be almost a second backer. They're blocking him with the arc and H back. So now you got a block right there. And if this guy doesn't meet this with physicality and really slow this up, you got one for the linebacker here. And you've got them all. There's nobody left. So right here, this one's especially tough because the end kind of widens with the arc. He just sets himself up to get whacked. And now there's there's your end. So you want to play super physical and kind of squeeze that down. Didn't happen. Here's the second puller getting up to your one linebacker. So you only got one guy in the second level. And then the safety comes down to be the second guy on the second level, but they have a tight end for him or an H back for him. So you got a hat on a hat, not great. And this is kind of what happens. And you'll, you'll even see it pretty well here from the backside. So when this guy comes down, you really want to squeeze that tight and meet that pull. You don't want to meet it too far upfield. You want to meet it at the line of scrimmage, really condense this box, right? If you're playing box, if you're boxing it and you're not spilling it, we want, instead of having an alley this big, I want to meet him here and squeeze the alley to here. And then hopefully I squeeze that alley and then it kind of messes up the second puller and penetration inside could help that too. But like I said, LSU kind of whipped forward off the ball into, on the interior for a lot of this game, especially in the run game here. So here you go. You see this arc step widens him out. Thank you very much. I'm going to safety. You've widened this you've widened the box for me. Basically they're trying to get the, you know, the, the tackle box. They're trying to widen it more room for this puller. Thank you for widening the alley. You got your linebacker coming over top, but you only got one linebacker and guess what? They got a puller for him. So you really in this front, you've got no shot. Really? This is, you've got basically you one of, one of those guys that got to win one-on-one -on -one and get some interior penetration. This guy's got to be a killer and really blow up that first puller. But right now, if this dude, if this guard is a player, you've got nothing left over here. So basically, if, if I get a hat on a hat, my back is in the clear with nobody left. A lot of times as an offensive coach, you're trying to get the back one-on-one -on -one with a safety. He's one-on-one -on -one with like the goalpost right now. There ain't nothing out there for him. So this is one I thought they defended, another one they defended okay, but this is not the same formation uh, up front totally right here. So they bring the motion, first puller, second puller. In here, he's going to the inside, so it almost looks like he's spilling this, right? So if he's spilling this, that, that means they want the ball to bounce. You want that safety to be fitting up for the bounce, right? But he kind of hesitates. Again, does he have is he worried about that kind of move on RPO? I'm not sure if he if it's that or if he just fits this poorly. Um and again, we don't know all the calls. We don't have the all 22 films. So this is kind of just educated guessing and, and talking to some defensive guys I know. But right here, if this safety just fits outside there, you've got a chance to make a play for a loss. He kind of gets caught inside, and the back runs by him, 
and I think you end up with a penalty on this play of some sort that brings it back. But this is, you know, right there, you're not in terrible shape. This is one of the better defended ones they had on the day. Right here, it's, again, the safety's free because they did not have the H back on this side arcing to them. So they basically get away from this kind of run and just get to that. Here it is again. Now running it to the H back side, arc. Kick, wrap. Not good, right? So what can you do? Well, first of all, I, I, this this is tough when you get this double team pushing him back in the linebacker's lap. It kind of takes him out of the play totally. He's, he's not able to kind of retrace and get over the top. And then some indecision because of how you're playing this. I talked to one uh, defensive coordinator I respect about this and kind of asked him, well, how, how can you play this a little bit better? And then you can kind of see it a little bit better from the end zone view. First of all, on the end gets upfield. He doesn't squeeze tight. He gets upfield and just opens. So even he gets – this is not terrible. It's not great, but – you still, by going that far upfield, you've opened this alley, right? And then he seems like he's somewhat concerned with this H-back arcing, and he kind of is slow and does not trigger quite fast enough. Doesn't do a terrible job of taking on the block, but if he triggers a little quicker, then maybe we're in pretty good shape. So what the guy I talked to said he would have done against this look, and he was pretty successful – uh, coach, he was a high coach, high school coach at the college level as well. He he thought you take Cox, you blow this H back up and have the linebacker fill immediately, and then it gets spilled out to the safety, who's got a chance to make the play. Because right here, you see the kind of the hesitation by Diabate. Again, what are they asking him to do? Is he being asked to do a lot? He kind of recognizes it, but if he's able to just trigger right now. He's downhill, and he's meeting this first puller. If you say Cox is here, meeting the first puller, and then now there's nobody for the safety when the run would bounce out here, right? Again, they, but that would be kind of a way you'd almost be trying to spill it. it looks like they're trying to box it. And gets way far upfield because they're really concerned about rushing the passer. You know, I, somebody put out Florida stats today on defense. It might have been Nick Delatore, and it showed Florida was kind of middle of the road in the SEC in the country, and uh, mostly middle of the road in the SEC, decent in the country, and a lot of stuff. But they're really high in sacks. Well, these guys love to rush the passer, but what are you going to do when this happens? It didn't. It did not show good in what they were asking those guys to do. It did not show well for them. Another one. First of all, this doesn't help either, getting pushed off the line of scrimmage like that. Here comes the kick. You got the H back on the safety. You got the second puller for the linebacker that's left again. Look at the front. It's a bare front. You've got one backer, and the safety coming down is your second, second level player. You got blockers for those guys. So, you know, this bare front did not help them in this look or that tight front with the ends walked up did not help them in this look whatsoever. Uh, but they kept getting in it again, another second and six. Here we go again. Same thing. H back on this side. I'm guessing we're going to see an arc, a kick and a wrap and check it out. You got one linebacker and the safety is the second one on the second level. Not physical enough at the point of attack right there. Getting up the field, not squeezing this thing. If you get flat down the line right here and you just cause a pile up right there, that's a win. But getting up field, getting kicked like this is what every offense wants you to get kicked. Free access basically up to the linebacker there. And now off to the races. So a better job of kind of getting squeezing a little bit, but look, you just get too far upfield here. You get kicked and wrapped. And I think it's 
to me, this is more of an alignment issue. You've got no chance unless you start slanting or doing something slanting towards this H back. That's kind of your chance there, but they didn't really do much of movement or anything. You just kind of played straight up and got the ball run down your throat. And then you finally kind of adjust to it and try to play it a little differently. You bring the safety up in the box here. And it's the fourth quarter, so they've been running this thing down your throat. Well, guess what? They're going to have a counter punch off of it. So you've been playing for <laughs> you've been playing for this, and they finally wait till you align correctly, and then they run it back the other way. And again, coming back this way, you got to win at the point of attack here. Just look at the lineman here. You've got a free path to this linebacker there. Good down block here. Kick. Wrap. There's nobody left again. So this is just, no, had no answers for this the way they played it. Could have played it differently, but that was a debacle against the counterplay. And unfortunately, this is not new. Texas A, you go back and watch Texas A&M last year. They ran counter down Florida's throat. Go watch Oklahoma. They ran counter down Florida's throat. Thought and hope last year was an aberration on defense. Um, it just seems to be this is kind of there's been no adjustments made really to that counter look. And it's two years in a row that somebody's just able to get a lineup run counter and just run it down your throat. So offensively, let's get to some uh there's some some better stuff here on offense. So why crosser? It's a staple of uh, air raid teams. Love love a good Y crosser. So the on or Y cross. Typically, you have number one going on a go route. Two's running the speed out. Y the tight end here is running the crosser, and then backside you'll get a curl or a dig, kind of depending, and then maybe flare the back or I think here the play action right. But Y crosser. Florida runs a little differently here. They run it by showing screen here, but he's going to actually slip and he's going to be the vertical guy. So now he's the flat guy and the crosser's coming here. So just a cool way to get to uh, a staple play. So there's, there's the go route, the flat routes down here, the crosser's coming across. They did this a couple times, a few different ways. I thought it was interesting. Here we get the throwback coming. So some, some razzle does. I thought this was a game that if Florida could get up early and stay out of their own way, they get up early, LSU would be, may quit, right? Their coach was basically fired before the game. Uh, they quit kind of against Kentucky is what people on the sidelines said. So you thought if they could get up early, they might quit. Cool design here. They've shown this look where they've had Whittemore come in motion and be a blocker. They haven't handed one to him yet. They've had him carry out the jet fake. Here, going to run a post there. So it looks like maybe a, setting up for a shot play. Emory hands it off. Runs basically a wheel track for the old quarterback throwback here. Good job by Whittemore getting some depth here because that's really all I care about is getting depth. Emory gets out there. Excellent throw here by Whittemore. Good catch. Good play in, in what you have a pretty good drive going here. Hey, this is Y crosser again, an, but a different uh, kind of a cool way to run it. They might call it something else. They might call it H or whatever this guy is, but it's the same idea. You're going to have a flat route, but they're going to run it like a whip. He's going to run the wheel. So Florida, what Florida does a cool job is pairing different concepts together. He's going to be the crosser now. And block and he'll be the flat player on this side and then it looks like you have a dig coming behind it so basically the same exact play as the first play i showed you on offense but just a different way to get to all the same spots so i think that's kind of a, a mark of a really good passing game is you kind of have similar landmarks to get to similar reads for the quarterback but you package it up in a bunch of different ways so it looks like a lot of different plays and presents different looks to the defense but it's pretty much the same play that he hit Gamble on earlier in the, in the drive. Our favorite, four, four to a side. 
four strong, whatever you want to call it, overload, whatever, four receivers here. I think this is one where you probably could throw this. You've got – it looks like you've got three over four here, and they don't fly out. Probably could have thrown this one, but really good job by, by Pierce here in the offensive line. The back view is great. You can see Pierce kind of set these blocks up and really accelerate. Just running basically outside zone, so the quarterback has a read. Outside zone here, everyone's stepping left. Outside zone there, or pull it and throw it out here, right? So I think if you pull it and throw it, he walks in. Right there, you've got three on three. You pull it and throw it, you're in good shape. You hand it off here, and you see the back view here. Really well done. Watch Pierce. Really good feet right there to get back out. That's really good stuff. Good job, Ethan White here, getting to the second level. All right, pushing this guy on, getting to the second level. Great job. Good job up front. Good job by the back here. Really good feet there. Really next level good stuff. 21 personnel, a new, a new group here. So got a tight end and then two backs, something new. I, I think you might see more two back stuff going. This is something, if you watched the video re review last week, I, I mentioned it would be Florida's got such good backs. It would be interesting to see more of them going forward. I hear you're just going to have a simple like zone split zone read, basically. He's going to bluff and then lead, and then the quarterback would follow him as lead blocker if he gets the correct read here. So right there, makes it look like split zone, and then he bluffs going to the second level. So it's like uh, a zone there. Quarterback pulls it. Right read. Good job here by the left tackle. Getting to the second level. Right. Good job putting this guy on Ethan White and then climbing. Then they have the second back coming. So right there, really good job. Good play. And this sets up some – this sets up a throw later for Anthony Richardson. But just want to show that. 21 personnel. Read. Here we got – looks like – to me, this looks like uh, concept made famous by Peyton Manning. To me, this looks like levels. This guy's pushing 10 and in or 12 and in. He's pushing 6 and in. You're really kind of eyeing this guy. If he turns and walls that and turns and runs with it, you can come underneath. If he passes it off, you go to the one the, – the deeper throw here. It's right there. He passes that off. With eyes kind of to there. So then you know there's my window for the dig. Good concept. Good read and throw. Good catch there. So here's here's Anthony Richardson. Not his first drive. This is after Emory Jones' first interception. Um, and just to show what the idea of this play was. So on a previous play, so this one here, third down on Anthony Richardson's first drive. I thought if you go back and watch, he if you would have kept it on the first one, you had a pretty good run play here. But what teams are going to start doing, and we talked about this previously, is bringing, almost bringing two off the back for the quarterback. So you, you try to bring the tight end around, but they still got two off the back. So well, I, what Florida, I believe, anticipated here is that they could put their tight end here and they still might get the same look. They might get a similar look even with the tight end there. Unfortunately, you get a corner or somebody outside here on the tight end. So when you go to arc and make it look like you're arcing for the zone read and take off, he does a decent job. But you get enough to where he, you, you, your gamble appears to have a step. But this is one that you know is probably they set this one up all week in practice. This one's looked good. Richardson's thinking, I've got to get out of my hands because i got a big play here if I can just get the ball out of my hands. But when you get in the grass like this, it's almost better to just throw it out of bounds, live to play the next day, right? Because it's hard as, strong, as big and strong as you are, it's going to be hard to get anything on the ball here. It's either that or if you know you're throwing this thing, the only other thing you could do is, and sometimes people will teach this when they teach boot, don't be so flat here get a lot more depth to give yourself a chance to throw this thing. But that's again, comes with more playing time here. He tries to make a play. You see as he's, as he's throwing, gets yanked back, pulls the ball off target, 
makes the ball come out all wobbly and short. But if you have a chance, you've got some room to throw this thing because Gamble's got him kind of stacked. So he's on top of that corner or safety, whichever is rolled down, and you've got a shot. So I think Richardson's probably thinking this is a big play. I want to make it. Um, but but sometimes you've got to learn to take the easy play, take the safe play, live to play another down, right? Especially on first down. So here's the third and one. I just want to show this because I, I think Emory gets a lot of crap. Um, I think he's I think he's doing he's playing all right. If you look at the numbers, the offense is still really good with him on the field. But there's just I think he's very um he's very competent, I think. But you'll see later, Anthony Richardson gets a power play. So here it's quarterback power. I mean, this one looks here. It's third and one. So the smart thing is just get this first down. That's great. But look at the what you've got out here to this. They do a good job here. This is 12 personnel. They're going empty of caving that thing down, and you've got your puller coming. I mean, if I just bounce that thing and I'm in there, that may go for a touchdown right there. And you know, that's something you see Anthony Richardson basically cuts the power all the way back. And we'll, we'll get to it here in a second, probably. But so now we're on to the second half. I'm not going to show the Hail Mary. It's kind of just a schematically, it's just everybody running the end zone. Let's throw it up. It's not, to me, it's not super interesting. You've got kind of the speed reader, is what I call it. So you make it look like zone read for a second, get them to step inside, try to hold him. Once they see that look, now run right at him, get a good pitch get a pretty good block and, and get a nice run there on second down. So I'd love to see if Richardson's going to be the guy, more option. I think they respect, and you, you see it right here. This is a beautifully designed play. You see the respect that he gets, and they talk in the broadcast, Richardson, when he's in, they know they're going to run the ball first. So these guys all play the Richardson run. Toss, look here, make it look like you're running counter almost. Right, looks like quarterback counter off this toss fake, sell it, and then look at all this play you get right there. The safety here, safety there. Pierce is going to sneak right up the hash. This is a really beautifully designed play. And then up here, you got three receivers going wide, doing a screen. So these guys are all engaged. So you're basically playing, these guys are all out of the play. You're playing with these dudes in here. And you just got everybody to suck in on this run right there. Really good job. Good throw. Great execution. Awesome play design right there. Really good stuff. And I and I think Richardson really gives you a lot of play action from the quarterback. Right here, I think this is quarterback power RPO. I think he's got the option to keep this. And they run this on the goal line later. Basically, I think we're going to basically like power lock where these guys are blocking, just locking there. He's pulling around. Slant. It looks like everybody's kind of, everybody's running ends or slants. It looks like to me, basically, if this guy plays run, I can whip this slant out here. And Richardson's got a really strong arm and can fit it in some tight windows. So, but I believe if, if he was to turn and play pass, he could probably keep the run there. So a little bit different, little, Power RPO, I believe, is what it is, especially when you see these guys getting downfield like that. Cool stuff, cool design. Here's a draw. We've seen this one a bit, but really good, well blocked. And then once this guy gets ahead of steam, he's tough to stop. Really, all he's looking for, three over three out here, motion with this. As soon as he sees a guy leave the box, he knows he's keeping it. If that guy would have stayed, he'd probably throw it to Pierce out there. What's crazy is he probably still could have thrown it to Pearson been all right. He keeps it. And this guy, this is no chance to tackle him right there. Again, play action. I think play action with Richardson just hits a little bit differently, seemingly. Toss fake. Arc. Get lost and slip this right here. And then not waiting for this thing, right? Not waiting. As soon as he clears, the ball's coming to him. And it gets there in a hurry. 
So, right, I'm not waiting for him to get here before I throw it and maybe let a safety come over the top and get in the play or let this guy underneath the throw. As soon as he clears, he's already begun his throwing motion. Let it rip, get it out there, gets it on his tight end. Great run after catch here by Gamble. Really good job. Again, another well-designed play. Look at all the action you get with this toss. You've ton of action here. Bang, and then put it on him. Great job, great timing there. So here, who sells this play? Kamori Gamble does a great job selling this. So first of all, getting down blocks here. Good job by the receivers. He's going to turn inside and then kind of pirouette back out and be the lead blocker. And him going inside and kind of turning his back really helps to sell this. And then really good job here on the ball handling by Richardson and the back. I believe that's Naquan Wright selling this. Really good job. You see Gamble's turning back out now. He's leaning inside. Gamble kind of takes most dangerous and then great run after uh, great run uh, by Copeland here. And then what you love to see there, nice pirouette. What you love to see here from Copeland, two hands on the ball in traffic right there. That's what you like to see. You like to see a guy learning from those mistakes. Right here, I believe this is the same quarterback power, RPO. He steps up, so you basically got one-on-one -on -one out here. Slant, and again, look how quick this thing gets on him. Let's go full speed here so we can kind of really appreciate that. Bang, bang. That gets on him in a hurry, and that's hard to defend. And that's something I think with this group of receivers not being quite as fast and as, as quick as last year's group, where you had guys like Kyle Pitts and Kadarius Tony that could get open on anyone at just about. This group's kind of a little bigger, maybe not quite as good as those guys. So having a stronger arm gets the ball on them quicker, so it really takes advantage of whatever separation they do generate. And this is the one, right? We, we think about that Emory run. It's third and one. He gets the one. He keeps the drive going. You know, But he had a chance to bounce it, but all he wanted to do and all he needed to do was get the first down, which as a coach – if your guy does that and does what he's supposed to, that's great. But the special guys, like the truly, you know, you keep hearing the word transcendent thrown around, can get you more than what's designed. And this is not designed like this, I don't believe. He just has some great vision, cuts this thing back. This may be designed, I don't know, but it's just a uh, freaky, a guy that can do this. Because he has the option to throw. Here, I think he's the option to follow here. He sees this flow over the top and then cuts it back. I don't believe that's designed. If it is, great design. But I think it's just a guy that's kind of a freak of nature making a play. Then we, we 21, so we've we've had the we had the split action. Then we have like a stretch action here. Florida likes outside zone, so this is a this is kind of a natural progression here. It's a stretch progression. So you're trying to run this through here, get the wheel, which I think you score on later. Good job not forcing it. And then up top, up top, you're doing this to kind of buy time here. Sell, block on the bubble. He gets vertical, trying to see if you can get that corner to run with him and then sneak the wheel down the sideline. LSU does a pretty good job on this side, but that allows Copeland to sell block here and then break in on a slant. Really well-designed play here. So I've got time to look here for the wheel. I don't got it. Good job by Richardson getting his eyes back. There's a slant coming open. Put it on him. Good run after catch. It's good to see Copeland kind of come alive a little bit in the game. Then here's the same look. Basically the same exact play right here. Bubble. And then this throw is just unbelievable. If this is not an inch perfect throw right here, sell the stretch. And then go. If this throw is not inch perfect, it's picked off and maybe housed. Because this is not defended poorly. Well, this throw is perfect, high with pace. 
Great catch here by the back. You've got some backs that can do a lot of stuff for you. So right here, again, you're hoping this guy runs with a tight end, and then, the, then he's kind of both get lost or gets caught in the shuffle right here, right? He gets lost a little bit. Well, this is not a terrible job. So if he tries to throw this thing right here, he may jump that and house this. Pick that easy. He may not house it because he might get caught, but by uh, this guy. But if he's if he's wrong with this throw, if he's short with this throw, this is this could be bad. Instead, he's inch perfect with it. Over outstretched hands for a touchdown. That's a big time throw on a really difficult throw right there. So what you know, what can we work on a little bit? The same thing you love to see on that run play where he kind of breaks it back here. Looks like you got Copeland kind of hesitating and coming underneath of Henderson here. You got the back coming out on like a wheel. But it's third and four. You only need four. So right here, you see he's coming to match the back, it looks like. So that means my window to Copeland right here should be wide open. So right here, if I just put it on Copeland's body, there's the first down. Instead, he kind of made tries, rolls out here, makes a big throw. Misses it, puts him fourth down. Now, luckily, good job here by him and the offense. They're going to convert here, but that's something down the line that, you know, if you're playing Georgia next week and you got a chance to convert first downs, you got to take them. Against really, really good defenses, you got to take your chances when they come to you. Don't try to force things. Just take what you can get. Right here, great job getting the ball out of your hands. Fourth down. And then this throw was – an absolute laser beam coming back to Copeland's on kind of a hitch and go here, stutter go. That thing's thrown from the 45 on a frozen rope about five yards deep in the end zone. Or sorry, the 40. About five yards deep in the end zone. So a 45 yard throw on a rope over a defensive back. That's pretty good right there. Um, and that's just the kind of what you see from him is why. You know, so many people want to see more. And then the final play here is the interception, uh, the sealed the game. This was close to being really big. So Florida's going to run basically shallow sting. They've run some mesh, right? This year we've talked about mesh and the like. So he's going to run kind of a, a deeper crosser. And then Wells is going to run. It's part. I, I've heard it. You know, Oklahoma runs this a lot. You're starting to see in the pros. It's almost like the tight end leak you see in the pros. But you hear it called shallow sting. But I, I think the sting is the double post concept. Uh, but he's basically going to come across like he's running a shallow, and then he's going to get up the field. The back's going to come here and hold. Try to hold there, and you're hoping they try to play this shallow. And then Wells, I believe, is able to get vertical. So here, right here, it's hard to see, but he's got him. He's got a lot of space. Rush gets in Richardson. This is another one of Richardson's like, I got to I know I got a good play on right here. I got to get the ball out of my hands and throws a pick. So unfortunately, another loss for Florida. Oddly, they've had a positive win expectancy in every single game this year. So based on the stats, they've been expected to win every single game, and yet they've lost three. Uh, you know, maybe they'll be on the other side of that luck when they play Georgia, but I think you saw some good things from the offense, and I think there's more you'd like to see from Richardson. And defensively, you've got to get that figured out. That should not take this long to figure out. Um, I don't know if it's alignment. It seems to be an alignment issue. Uh, players seem to be getting a little fed up. Um, you got to give these guys a chance and hopefully you get some things cleaned up on the bye week and have a chance to come out uh, in George against Georgia and make a big statement. But we'll see how they respond to this kind of nasty loss here.